Square 4, Series 3, Episode 24. A damp afternoon, somewhere in Stroud. The wizard Wigston has been talking about floating weasels, the problems he has with shrews, and the difficulty of deciding what is and isn't a world tree. I might take on squirrels, Wambleforth says, pretty much out of nowhere. Plenty of them about, says Wigston. Not as many boat-dwelling lesbians as I'd hoped for, says Wambleforth, referring to their previously declared area of expertise. Buttons, says Wigston. Wambleforth nods. Just the ones that fall off, or all of them? Oh, all of them, I should think, says Wigston. Also badger breeches. What happens if my squirrels start wearing things with buttons on? Wambleforth inquires. We'll have to share jurisdiction, Wigston says. They are sat in a bush. And there is ginger beer involved and also cheese balls. Wigston's dominion over cheese balls is unquestionable. It is probably going to rain, hence the bush. Also, they have both achieved levels of boredom that make almost anything seem appealing. Have you seen the truth? Wigston asks. Maybe. Wambleforth is unsure, and given how Wigston's mind works, there is no knowing where this question might be heading. The anti-vaxxers were handing it out. It's their newspaper, newsletter, thing, the truth. Did you read it? Wabbleforth asks. I didn't want them to feel in any way supported or validated, so I didn't. There were some guinea pigs on the front page and a question about whether your children are guinea pigs. You'd think most people could be counted on to know whether they have children or guinea pigs, Wambleforth says. One of the guinea pigs looked really unhappy, Wigston says. Perhaps that was the one that wasn't getting any drugs, Wambleforth speculates. They probably like drugs, Wigston says. It got me thinking about the truth, though, the naked truth. Perhaps I should do my own paper and call it the naked truth. What do you think? What would you put in it, Wambleforth asks. Pens, mostly, says Wigston. Naked pens, says Wambleforth. Well, naturally, biros and ballpoint pens for balance. Would it be truthful, though, to call pictures of pens the naked truth? Would I lie to people about the truth, Wigston counters. If the truth is full of lies and you lie about the lies, what have you got then? Wambleforth asks. Guinea pigs, says Wigston, and a great many naked pens. I'm glad we've cleared that up, says Wambleforth, who is watching ominous clouds roll across the sky. Are there any more cheese balls? Yes, Wigston says emphatically, and they're still dry. They wouldn't be very manly if they were wet, Wambleforth says. Oh, quite, Wigston replies. Nothing manly at all about a wet cheese ball. This, for reasons best known to themselves, makes Wambleforth think about a particular kind of wrestling where it is a legitimate move to grope your opponent's testicles so long as no handling of the penis occurs. As there are trousers involved, this seems like a difficult situation to effectively referee. Wambleforth considers mentioning this in relation to the cheese balls, but realises it would take an unreasonable amount of explaining and that it might not be worth the effort. When I was young, I lived in a very narrow street, Wigston announces. Most of their conversations are like this, with no obvious ways to see how one statement leads to another, but it does not bother either of them unduly. Was it a house on a very narrow street, or did you live in the street itself? Wambleforth asks, with genuine curiosity. There was a lead owl, Wigston replies. It used to watch me all the time, the lead owl. It was rather unnerving. My first bedroom had a monster under the bed, Wambleforth says. It liked to hold my ankle during the night. I think it was meant to be reassuring. The owl wasn't reassuring, Wigston says. They never are, says Wambleforth. I am going to have to do something about the truth, though, says Wigston. We can't go on like this. Wambleforth wonders if he means the anti-vax literature or truth in some broader and more philosophical sense or something else entirely. But then they get on to talking about moths and spiders and the moment is lost. Wigston claims that one of his bedrooms was entirely made of moths, except for the bits that were made of spider webs. It is a plausible statement and everyone is too tired to worry about objective truth. You included, I rather suspect. 
It is hard to keep up with Wigston's titles, areas of influence and other such shenanigans, but we could have a go anyway. Prince of Magpies, King of the Five Valleys. Not the six, obviously, because Ditchley doesn't recognise him. Prince of Pine Martins, Duke of Dormice, Protector of Badgers, Weasels and Stoats, Knight of the Slow Worm and Champion of Water Voles, Speaker to Bats, Willows and Parsnips, High Priest of Zorlop. In other people, this perpetual acquisition of new and ever more preposterous titles might be annoying. It might seem self-aggrandising. In Wigston, the effect is charming and conveys a distinct sense of not taking himself too seriously. A few weeks ago, he was officially the patron saint of floating weasels and the CEO of a rather impressive compost heap. One year, he declared himself to be a middle manager for anarchists. Back in the day when he spent his spare time thwarting Winklepicker, he used to turn up on her committees with titles like Officer in Charge of Deconstructing the Philosophical Basis of This Entire Operation and on parish councils as Man Who Has Been Elected Because No One Else Even Realised This Was Happening. He has a fondness for the absurd and an even greater fondness for drawing attention to the ways in which people insist on taking their own absurdity far too seriously. <laughs>